we'll turn back a little bit to the, one of the core themes of the conference, startups and investing. And for that, I want to welcome our next moderator on stage and the panel he brought with him uh, about investing in R Romania. So you, you know Bonoyo is like a fantastic uh, journalist and editor-in-chief for Forbes in Romania. So he has like built up an amazing media company in, Clu in, in, in Bucharest, but one of the like most like cutting edge editions of Forbes. So please welcome the panelists. I'll stay here because I'm also part of the panel, so I'm not going anywhere. But thank you very much for joining. Please give a warm round of applause to this topic, which I think is very important. Thank you. Hello. And you, you will see now, Philip, it will be his, pass, his, his first panel as not being moderator. How do you feel now? It, it's very hard. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask the, the other guys to come over here with help with us. Please join us. So, I know it's a tech event, but we'll try to have a complete uh, perspective. Uh, uh, to complete your perspective, we'll be talking about business. We'll be talking about business in Romania. We have a great panel over here. We have two Romanians that are doing business in Romania, but also outside Romania, North America and uh, uh, Europe, uh, London. We also have two uh, non-Romanian, but uh, who are present here for many times uh, and uh, traveling here a lot. Uh, so you will see their perspective on doing business in Romania, but also comparing, uh, comparing this issue with, uh, um, with uh, doing business out, uh, everywhere in the world. So you know, of course, about, uh, about Romania, there are a lot of uh, statistics. I will not bother you with uh, too much statistics, but I've made just a few statistics over, over here because you know by heart, but Romania has an investment grade from uh, all S&P, Moody's and Fitch, has one of the largest population in the region, NATO, uh, EU membership, EU presidency, strategic partnership with US. You probably know that Pope was here. How many out, uh, out of you are Romanians? Just to understand. Okay, that's great. So we also have a diverse uh, audience. Um, Robbie Williams will be here soon. So Romania, it's quite interesting uh, for, for, the, for, for the overall uh, environment. So um, I will ask uh, our panelists to make a short presentation of themselves and their relations with uh, Romania, their relations with business, doing business here in Romania. Please. Salut, Adrian. Uh, conduc companie aici, am înființat companie aici. Conduc un fond de investiții și o platformă de angel investors în in UK, una dintre cele mai mari din lume. Angels Den Funding. Ah, nu am știut că vorbim în limba română aici. Asta the, All of them had hands up. They were Romanians. I said, no, not, not all of them. Be no, no, it's okay. I'll, 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 I'll do it in German because otherwise I'll lose all my credibility. So that was about all the Romanian I can give you. Um, but it's a good party trick. No, so I'm Philip, and the context with, the, with this is, as some of you might know, I had my previous company, Startup Scobbler, had like 80, 90% of his team here in Cluj, so I was living for five years in Cluj. Um, sold that company a few years ago, moved to Silicon Valley, and after that, um, invested in a few companies, um, both in Romania and as well as in Berlin, um, and have been like, yeah, part of the ecosystem, Textilvania, and these kind of things. Hi, uh, Oren, uh, co-founder of uh, Conatix, co-founder of COO. Um, I've been coming to Romania for the last 12 years now. I uh, started as a outsource, uh, working with outsource companies, and then when I started my own company, I decided to start it with the Romanian team. Today we have over uh, 50 people here, and all of our product is based in Romania, in Cluj, and we are very proud of that. Hi, I'm Remus, Romanian background. I had the first business 20 years ago in Romania, right after the communist collapse. I decided to move to Canada, Toronto, and my dream was really to invest in Romania. 
started with a company called Voice Mailtel Investment in Romania. And after that, I tried to become a serial entrepreneur and open round assist uh, uh, international students database program and few other investments that I have uh, as well back in Toronto. I'm trying to connect both the Romanian investment with the Canadian experience and with the fund that we have here uh, around 200 million. Thank you. Okay, and now let's get to the hard part. What are the do's and don'ts of doing business in Romania from your perspective? I will start. So the, the main one I will say, is, at least for me, from my experience, is uh, you have to have the right partnership. You have to have somebody that you trust. You are not here every day. I'm Romanian. I understand the culture. I understand the people. But still, you have to be there. You have to be face to face. Uh, the second one, uh, besides uh, having the trust there, is, is really the culture. There is still a culture difference between how you invest in Romania and how you are going to invest in in, in my case, in, in Toronto. Um, it's very similar, but there are some key elements that are not, are not the same. And uh, the perspective and the words, you know, doesn't mean the same. So always you have to be careful, in my view, about partnership and, uh, and culture. So in terms of do's, definitely come here often and be close to your team. It's uh, super important. Uh, you cannot manage it from uh, being far away and expect everything to work well. Uh, in terms of uh, don't, uh, don't start with the bureaucracy. It's, uh, there is a lot of uh, you know, bureaucracy. And if you start in something, don't start with the, um, forming a business and uh, going that direction. Start small and then uh, deal with the bureaucracy later. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I fully second that, but to bring somebody else on the, on the, on the do side. So, what, what I would provocatively say is, like, if you want to, like, start coming as a business, not as investment, if you want to come as a business to Romania, come to here not for the cost reason. I think what I've worked, like, what I've learned in IT business over time, like, the most important thing is that you need to have the best team in the world. And I've seen a lot of companies, they come here and say, like, I want to be, like, I don't know, 70% cheaper than in Silicon Valley, and they attract like the B talent, and then you're like totally screwed. So what I say is like, come with the mind, and, and, and like, this comes with a mindset. Can say like, ah, oh, yeah, the team inclusion is performing a little bit less than that, but they're like 70% cheaper, it's okay. So don't come with that mindset. Come with the mindset that you want to have the best people you find globally, be willing to pay people at or above market level, um, I mean, and just have the mindset and push everybody as hard for any team. So I think that's one do that's very important. Get the best people and measure them to a global benchmark regardless in which market they are in. I think that's, that's one, you'll get much higher performance team, much more satisfaction in your team. And the second thing, which I think is a, is a do, is especially if you're doing business with the US, as I'm based now in Silicon Valley, be very mindful of the 10-hour time difference. What we got screwed a lot early on is when we tried to have distributed team and have the product manager sitting here, the team sitting there, and the UX person sitting somewhere else. And we had to learn a lot of very painful lessons that it's much more better to have like a team that has all the functions. So if you want to like invest and do business in Romania, that's like kind of the two top advisors besides being here very often that, that I would have. Um, and that kind of like includes the don'ts as well. I mean, don't do the opposite of that. Okay, I'll approach the startup subject, obviously, because we want to become soon a very important hub in this direction. First thing, mindful of cultural differences. This is something that I've noticed being able to, we're doing an analysis of almost 2,000 startups every month in London, and we're looking here as well. Uh, we've discovered that less than 5% of the companies here have access to capital in the same time with accepting the right mentorship around them. And that's very, very interesting. Please be mindful about the cultural differences. Please be mindful about the fact that we can learn from anywhere and anyone in the world. Doing business, it's a cultural change. And obviously, being a Latin people, a Latin culture, we want to be closer to the ones around us. The second topic is most probably doing business here is take care of the lack of predictability from the fiscal environment. So when you're doing business here, Expect the unexpected. It's a pattern of preparing for anything possible. The third one, most probably, is make sure you do not accept money from people that cannot add value in your company. The worst thing you can end up with is in Romania, an investor that will actually destroy your company in the near future because you've accepted some amount at the beginning. 
culture, mentorship, and choose the right people around you. That's what I would do. That's what I'm doing for the businesses that I have here and we're funding in the UK as well. I, I'm not surprised that actually we share the same idea with the culture. And even if you are Romanian, that is really, at least for me, a big challenge. Because even if you are investing in Romania, reality it is you are not investing in Romania because any product, any service you develop, it is going on the international market. The Romanian market is not big enough. All of us will go somewhere else, will go in Europe, in my case, in North America. So that's why culture is so important because the way you develop and any products, anything that you are doing, you want to be user friendly. So culture is the, the one that helps you to understand your customer base. In my case, always I'm focusing on membership base, making sure that we grow the membership base. And in fact, we are investing in people, we are investing in product, we are investing in growing a membership and expecting in the end a return there. So I'm glad that Adrian, we have the same idea about the culture there. Thomas Friedman said uh, he has a book on the fact that the world is flat. We're talking now more and more about globalization. Of course, there are some threats nowadays, but anyway, the globalization is going onwards. What should be and what is and what should be Romania's uh, place in this, uh, in this global uh, perspective? Uh, how is positioned right now and when um, what, what is the sweet spot that uh, the, the sweet spot where when it can be it, it, can, it can maximize its outcome? I'll, I'll answer that one. For, for me, I will say the, the main one it is don't be just local. Try to be international. Try to have a partnership. Being in, in Toronto and you know, kind of I'm an immigrant there. You have to prove that you are part of them and you have to be local there. So. Don't try to do just from one place, from Romania, try to be international, to show that you are in multiple countries. In that case, your product, your services are more recognized. So I would say, be in multiple places, even if you are in Romania, investment is there, try to have partnership and develop with partnership. In that case, you answer the question, you know, it's a global economy, we are in multiple countries, and even in my case, Romania will be the main investment, but you are across a couple of countries. So that's, that it is for me. Um, so uh, I think uh, Cluj is a collusion. Romania is a, a early market or a new, new market. So I would focus in more on the B2C uh, type of uh, products versus the B2B. The B2B, you know, other companies and other countries behave in, uh, in a different way. You see in the U.S. you have big companies and to try to work with them and to try to penetrate uh, them it will be harder while on Cluj you have a lot of young people with great ideas uh, that uh, can create great uh, uh, B2C like uh, games and other stuff. Uh, so I will focus on that. Yep. So I, I strongly believe that uh, software is eating the world. So I think it's coming the biggest industry across everything. You see like a Tesla car is basically only software. And you see this trend replicated everywhere. So I think this creates a fantastic opportunity for Romania because you have like uh, the, the talent of software engineering, software development, and the, the functions adjacent to that product management UX is unbelievable. So I think this is like a fantastic asset. And the, the place that Romania should should play in that to answer the second question on it. I think Romania is in a very interesting times. A lot of it in the market is still dominated by outsourcing companies. And I think prices have risen quite a bit in the market, right? So I think over the last few years, I mean, I think, thank, thank God everybody here has gotten a lot of like salary increases and I think everybody's very happy in Cluj. So I feel people are much more relaxed and happier than in Silicon Valley in general. Um, and I think like the market needs to transition up the value chain to the next level having product companies. And I'm super excited to see that like with like UiPath and like a few other really great success stories out of Romania, you see that they're making that step. So I think what, what, what I believe is that this step like from like providing services to really like creating the products, creating startups, hopefully you can help fund a lot of them um, and everybody else here. I think that is really key. And I see, I'm super happy. Even this weekend I talked to a few CEOs of like outsourcing companies and even they create product divisions, right? So everybody's seeing this. And I think this is over the next five years if Romania manages to go from an outsourcing to a product and startup ecosystem, the growth is remarkable that can be had. So I think that's what we should all work on together. As well, you know, 
Uh, I don't know if so it's any difference too much between Romania and, again, in my case, uh, Toronto, Canada. I believe many things are very similar, I will say, in, in, in many ways. Even the way you develop the business. We say, you know, as a Romanian background, you need relationship. Trust me, the same there, you really need a lot of relation to be able to do something. Without relation, you really cannot do too much. I, in my case, I'm able to use a relation that I have with a well-known entrepreneur there, Bruce Croxon, which is similar with Ion um, uh, here. I used to say in the past with Bekali, and everybody said, don't say that anymore. So now I compare him with Ion uh, So it's about relation. Otherwise, you don't have the trust. You need to have the trust. And the only way to get the trust is by relation, because otherwise you have a long path to prove that you are, you are real, your investment and your chances to succeed are, are real. So I would say as well, there is not too much difference between investing in Romania or in, in, in any other country. Uh, the things that I learned from investing there are similar with investing here. I'm not sure what's the case for you. I'll turn to your bucket. <laughs> Kidding. So first, in Romanian, I'm going to say this in Romanian. Mai bine împarți un tort cu 20 de cofondatori care este de un miliard de euro decât să faci 50 de mii de euro tu în România singur. I, that, I agree with that. That's, that's all what's about. That's why we're talking about what's Romanian's sweet spot. It's very simple. We should become more powerful than Israel. We should become more powerful than Poland as a startup ecosystem. The pipeline of amazing global startups should start step by step from CE. And luckily, Romania has an amazing pool of talent. So why wouldn't we literally learn and work with amazing people from Silicon Valley, from Canada, from London, everywhere else, that they understand how to solve a global problem, launch a global product, and the Romanians still own a huge majority of that company in the future? So I definitely agree, but uh, the most important thing, and we see it in Israel, and we see it also in the U.S., is the infrastructure, is the, you know, to have uh, mentors, to have these accelerators. Uh, these, these are the things that really make an impact on startups, and I think as much as this uh, uh, will happen here in the Cluj, and I know it's starting to happen, you will see more and more products coming from Cluj to the global market. I, I want to add to that one. In, in my case, for example, we try to create exactly what you said, solving that uh, pie by having a strong relation with a fund in Romania, Caron 13 Capital, as well as a strong partnership here with, you know, that is for 15 years with Luciana, I believe, is somewhere here. So you, you need to have a longer, you have to have partnership to be able to have the pie. You, you want to have everything by yourself, you need to be like Google in that case. Otherwise, at, our, at least my level, you really need this partnership. Otherwise, you'll not be able to, to do it. I have a question in, uh, let's say, a mirror question. It's the same question, but looking uh, different. Uh, for, for you, the two Romanians, what you wish you knew uh, about doing business outside Romania at the time that you weren't doing business outside Romania, and for you, uh, for Philip and, and, and Oren, uh, what do you wish you knew about doing business in Romania before you came here? What, what would have helped you in being more, uh, let's say, uh, being more productive? Oof. That's a complicated one. I think, so when I joined the fund, when I, started, when I became the CEO of the fund, uh, one of my greatest shocks was talking to people in 10 different cultures, trying to understand them and trying to negotiate in, with so many people so different. So luckily in Romania, doing business in Romania is nice because you understand everyone. You're a native, you know how to speak to them, you can get along very easy. So in Romania, one of the things that I would, I'd love to see happening is diversity. Diversity actually brings businesses way forward, way faster. So cultural, I, I think it's, it's very important to understand how to interact with any type of people anywhere at any moment. I mean, cu culture was also my, my biggest learning experience and I like screwed up big time, right? So, and this, it's a very simple thing. So, I'd, like the first time I went to a team dinner in, in, in Romania, I used like the German word of cheers, which is like Prost, which a lot of you in the audience know is very offensive in Romania. So, when like a lot of your team thinks, why is like our boss calling us all idiots? Something is like wrong here. 
Um, so that, that's a problem, right? Like, but I think this is, this is like a small example. But in general, like as, as you might know, Germans are very direct. We really, in Germany, embrace conflict. So in Germany, it's like if you have a hard discussion, as long as it's like within like polite and so on, you really enjoy it, right? Like we're like built that you like punch each other really hard, discuss and come to a conclusion and that's it. And like in Romania, I've seen when I came here, like built by like old like communist things, like people don't like to be criticized in public as much here, right? Like and in Germany, it's like totally all right. So I think when I came here, I upset a lot of people. Um, so I think I should have like really known and adapted to the culture and I learned over time so I became much more mellow and like learned like how to like uh, deal with people here and I've learned the same everywhere I do business. Right? There's not a particular thing like every market is different. I've done business in Silicon Valley now, I've done business in China and Asia and I've, I've seen that really like even if you're very well intended and in your culture it's totally acceptable, in other cultures what you might be doing is like extremely rude. So I think I've learned that lesson over like many years the hard way. Um, and I've become like much more adapted and like understand now when I work between different cultures I adapt the message a lot so a message I would deliver to our Romanian team will be very different than a message I would deliver to our Chinese team for example. So um, again cultural differences uh, um, I know that when I started uh, to work with, in Romania um, <clears throat> and we, we founded the company and we started it, I had the feeling that uh, uh, the, the leaders will invest in the people as much as we would invest in the people and the work environment would be a free and open work environment. And I discovered that uh, it's not that easy uh, to achieve like it is in the US and the uh, work culture is a little bit different here. And to really get the, the atmosphere of startups, you know, fun and uh, places people want to hang out and give uh, more to the people, it's, it's hard. And the only way to really bridge this gap is to come here often, to meet the people, to be friends with the people, to really know them, know, know their families, know everyone, and uh, that's the only way to really bridge the gap. I think if you move your team for three months in Vama Veke every summer, productivity goes through the roof. If you... <laughs> so my observation it is that uh, clearly uh, for me I notice Romanians are very, very entrepreneurial. And uh, I believe the reason they are very entrepreneurial, and I wish that I knew that we are as well uh, back then, is because they wanted to do more before they were not able to do. The same here in, in, in Toronto, in Canada, the most entrepreneur guys are really not Canadians, are immigrants. I have been to a conference this size, and I asked how many people are not from, everybody was entrepreneur part of the conference. And I asked the question, who's from somewhere else not from born in Canada? Half of the people. So the uh, size of this uh, space here and half were not born in Canada and both everybody was entrepreneurial. The same applies to Romania. They are very entrepreneurial, and I could leverage that more if I realized from from the beginning. But you know, you learn as you go. Now, one let's say hot issue in the last uh, in the last five years: um, Romania developing uh, tech skills, very good tech skills. A lot of uh, foreign investors that I get in contact with. They are telling me about the improvement in business skills that can uh, that should be attained here in Romania to, let's say, uh, make uh, the, the tech skills even more and more productive. Uh, these kind of events are, are building and helping, uh, let's say, the, the tech environment getting uh, business skills. What you as business Romanian people recommend to, let's say, jump, to, to, jump, uh, to, to improve dramatically business skills and what you as foreign uh, investors recommend on having, a, let's say, a very quick uh, uh, increase in, in, the, in the business skills to be at the level of the, of the tech skills that is very high here in Romania. I, 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 can, I can start. So one thing I would recommend the audience, and I think you're, you're a great example. I've seen a lot of the most successful Romanian entrepreneurs that I know, they've been one or two years abroad, right? Like you don't need to spend your whole year abroad. But I think one of the best investments you can make in yourself is go like to a top level company globally. Go a year or two to 
go to Silicon Valley, go to Shanghai, wherever there is like the this absolute A game. Um, I think if you look at like the companies that are started, they usually have like one or two of the co-founders have, have done that. So I think the advice that I would give you, like definitely don't be afraid. Right? Like let me let me make an, a, a poll here. Who, who, who here in the audience has worked for at least like or worked or lived at least one year outside outside of Romania? So can we have like Oh, a decent amount. So it's like a few people. I mean, like, I would say like 20%. Right? And I think like, for example, in, in other markets, you would probably see that number. If I would ask in Silicon Valley, then that number would be probably 80%, 90%. So I think that's one of the best investments in the ecosystem that can be made. So uh, because you pointed out to me, I'll use my own example. Um, I was young. I was vice president in, uh, you guys might know, Nitramunia for Garage Rompiro at that time. So this is now 25 years ago. And, you know, I was doing well. I was as well director of Community of Europe. We had the funding that we did not have to reimburse at that time. So doing quite okay. But I, I felt the need to learn and improve my skills. And was no way to do because the technology was not there at that time. I was a programmer. I started as a programmer. Moved to Toronto. My first challenge was I have to work with the database. Honestly, I did not know what's a database database for everybody there was familiar with the database. What I noticed is the advantage for everybody here, you know, these skills are available. So now yeah, you can do that things that were not able to do 20 years ago. You have access to the internet. For us, we had myself no access to the internet. How do I learn about the database? We're not, they were not books. So there is a big opportunity now for us as Romanian, I'm speaking now, to play at the same level with everybody international. And I believe we are there, and majority here is visible working for international companies. So it is possible, and I believe there are steps done in the, in the right direction here. So uh, if you are a developer and uh, you're looking for a job here in Cluj, I would uh, recommend you to choose a product company over an uh, outsource company. I feel that uh, the ability to see the full a solution to work on everything uh, will be uh, it will give you an advantage over just working in outsourced companies. And, and both of us might have good recommendations where they could come if they yes, search for exactly, a job, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you just to like plug this hiring. If anybody's looking for a job, we're hiring a lot of people. The, the so same, and I think the same is true for you. Same is gonna. But I'm I'm. I'm saying this and probably I get fired if that gets televised. I'll be 10 times more happy if you start your own company. So I think the best thing in the Cluj ecosystem is like start your own company. The second best is join mine. Exactly. I support that and we would love to support any startup. <laughs> you know, come sit with us. We'll help whatever we can. So we're discussing about business. Uh, I'd like all of us to look in the mirror and to realize uh, your Romania is the last place in Europe for adults still learning. Please don't forget that. Don't stop learning at 25 or 27. That's mainly the problem why we don't know how to do business. We learn something in high school, faculty, and we keep doing it, and that's why we become amazing experts in a specific field. But if you need to, be, to become a business person, you need to keep learning things that you've never tried in your life. The, come on, the formal education doesn't make business people in Romania. They make good people in different domains, very good people on specific domains, but they don't teach you business in any way. So keep learning on your own. That's the reason why the business world is lagging in Romania. And second topic, you can learn from anyone. Choose your mentors. It's the most, the most simple way to evolve and to build up a business is to have the right mentors around you. It's not about age. Not everyone needs a mentor of 60 years old, 70 years old, CEO, global. No, find the right people that did things way better than you and start learning. I'm not kidding. The business environment will change only if we start learning. We're the last ones in Europe, and it's disappointing. I've worked 12 years in technology, e-commerce, media, communication. I'm working now in financial services, investment funds, and I'm learning. I, I've, been, I've been out of my comfort zone for the last three years like never in my life. I have no idea what I'm learning, but I'm learning continuously. So learn. That's my message. As a journalist, I need to have now a closing, but your speech was more motivational and more inspirational, so I will leave you with, uh, with Adrian's speech. So please find your mentor, 
please uh, have a broad uh, and global perspective and nevertheless remind that uh, remind it's important for you to remind that uh, you need to have a it's better to have a smaller uh, piece of a bigger pie than have a whole cake which is kind of small i was just translating to your, your romanian uh, words to to english thank you very much thank you uh, please have a round of applause for our panelists thank you thank you, thank you.